Hello YouTube, it's Rick Rawlings and we're back for another uh, edition of Let's Play Wings Over Flanders Fields. We are back with our Royal Naval Air Service, taking it to the Germans who uh, we were currently flying for and immediately got rammed. So let's head off to our campaign and see uh, see how things are going. We'll Sop with dolphins there. Squeeze by that. So we are with uh, Lieutenant Flighty. Philip Flighty, sub-lieutenant. Flown two missions. Last one I uh, got a little carried away, but that's okay because I'm a new pilot. And so I'm going to do stupid stuff. can't remember if we... Did we advance days last time? I think we did because we got that kill. We'll, we'll go one more. Ah, you know what? Forget it. We're just going to do it. We're going to fly today. We're not going to fly at 542 in the morning, though. We're going to advance that a little bit. So B flight's going up. Uh, squadron Commander Roderick Dallas is still in the squadron. I don't know if he... I don't think he stayed here, but we'll see. So I'm going to head over to the briefing room and uh, meet you there. Well, the orders of the day are to patrol friendly front lines. We should be able to manage that patrol. Uh, excuse me, poor weather is hampering our normal daily operations. Rain and cloud cover. Um, we're going to take the front line sector at FF1154, 23 miles round trip, 46 miles. Let's take a look at what that looks like. So it's pretty much just due east. Zoom in. You can, uh, one of the things you can do if you're time pressed, like if you are like me and have a job and a family and stuff like that, um, and you need to, you can do air starts, which will cut some time off your flight. You can also do what I do, which is usually, uh, if I'm flying for the British, I'll, uh, autopilot, you know, the, the takeoff if nobody immediately attacks, and then I'll just be ready to get out of autopilot if we see some enemies, but I'll kind of autopilot close to the front, and then I'll fly my mission and then, and then get back and land at a friendly aerodrome. Another thing you could do is pick squadrons whose aerodromes are closer to the front. So especially if you get down towards the, the middle of the front, the aerodromes are a lot closer to the front lines than they were up here uh, in the Dunkirk region. Let's take a look. So we're doing, uh, what did I say, 46 miles round trip. So we currently have 65 fuel. We have over 200 miles worth of flight. So I think if we take everybody down to 65, that will give us uh, an edge in flying. Uh, we've got a couple of twin gunners going there. Not the squadron commander, though. That's interesting. <laughs> kink, kink head. I like that. So I'm going to head to the field. Nothing else uh, Nothing else going on here that we need to worry about, I guess. Going over. Bye, Menon. And I'll see you there. Here we go. All right, start the old engine. Somebody up there, they're heading away from us. I guess they're friendly. But yeah, bad weather indeed, right? Let's see how it goes. You can hear, you can hear yourself when you're not on the ground anymore. Alright, so we'll get up here. In terms of uh, flight model, it's, a, it's an older flight model. It's been built up from the Combat Flight Simulator 3 flight model. There are wind effects. Not being a real pilot, I can't tell you how real they are. But each plane definitely does fly differently and you won't be able to jump from one into the next and just kind of head off successful there is some retraining that goes along with that some planes require more rudder in the turn some planes don't like a lot of rudder they like a lot of uh, bank and then pulling back so you just kind of have to fly each plane around and figure out what it likes of course you've got your rotaries with the blip switch like this guy right there and your inlines
head off to our marshalling point, get together, and we'll approach the front, and I'll be sure to bring you back then. No doubt due to the low cloud cover, Squadron Commander Dallas has opted to stay below the clouds for our patrol, which uh, is probably wise if you want to see recon craft or whatnot. I've been, uh, I don't know, what have I been playing the Wings Over Flanders Field series for 13, 14 years or something, and I keep telling myself I'm going to learn the names of all these places. Popperine, maybe? Popperine? But here we are, and I still don't know it, so I'm probably not going to learn it. But at any rate, we'll continue along our patrol, and uh, should anything exciting happen? be the second one to know. <clears throat> okay, we've made our turn to the southern leg of the patrol route, which makes for a bit of a dicey proposition for me because I am on the eastern most side of the flight, which means there's a good chance if we get attacked, I'm going to get attacked first. When you... I'm sure that you guys watching watch a flight where you don't get attacked, it's probably not super exciting, but when you're when you're flying, you do have that, you never really, because of the way the missions are generated, and it's not just, you know, it's just not like, you go here and there's enemies at this point, and then you go and there's enemies at this point, you never know when they're going to attack you, or if they're going to attack you, and that's, so that creates this tension and suspense that keeps you always on your toes, and so it's a lot more fun to fly a mission where quote unquote nothing happens, then it probably is to watch it. I mean even even still you've got you know, black birds going all around you. I just saw back there you can see at the moment, but the front was taking a pounding. There's the even with an older engine, the explosions, you know, if you're from up here looking down where the front lines are getting attacked. It's pretty impressive. It's pretty good. Coupled out with, I mean, the whole, I guess the best thing about Wings Over Flanders Field is that the whole atmosphere is really tied together very nicely. So it doesn't have the best, you know, it doesn't have the newest flight model, it doesn't have the newest graphics engine, and, you know, you'll occasionally get a little cloud popping there. But just in terms of, you know, believing that there could be a war going on and you're part of it, it does it pretty well. Even though there's, you know, there's not infantry running around on the ground and there's I don't think the tanks are back in there were tanks that they there are trucks and trains and stuff but just somehow the whole thing ties together to give you this pretty good feeling that you're part of the part of the great war in the air all right enough of me have talking and nothing happening we'll get back to the flight and I'll bring you back if we run into something Okay, they're breaking up, so somebody must be here somewhere. I don't see them yet, but when the squadron commander looks at me, I'm just going to nod sagely and be like, Yep, yep, I'm on, yeah, I see what's going on. And eventually, we'll figure out where the bad guys are. I use it, it's rare, as you would expect, I suppose, to spot the bad guys before the AI does. So let's, those guys go after that one, and then we'll go, as long as he doesn't come after me. Some of these two-seaters, man, they'll just come right after you. This guy. He's coming after me, what the... That. Oh, is there a fighter with him? Okay. Fighter escort, I guess. Is that a fighter escort? Yeah. Okay. There, let's get our head.
things are shooting at me from both ends. Self-destructing. Doesn't sound good. Look at this two-seater. It's just like follow me around while I'm trying to shoot down this scout. Alright. I don't want to crash in uh, enemy territory, so. I also don't want to get shot down by a two-seater, so. That'd be embarrassing. Back over the lines before the engine dies. Which isn't sounding all that good at the moment. Make sure we're going the right way. Come on, buddy. Make me come back there. So here's the. I think these are our forward lines. Conk out here, we're probably okay. Looks like our pursuer has gone away. Find a over by that factory. Okay, so if we can make it okay. We'll head over to these fields, that's probably the safest place to put down wrecking the plane. And those are some aggroed two-seater aircraft. Come on. And accurate, too. Stuff all over. Holes all over the place. Alright, so we've got... It's just got the river running through the middle of it. The river runs through it. RPMs are holding. I don't know what the rest of that means. Yep, here she goes. Alright, so I'm going to cut the mixture so we don't get an engine fire. And then just, this looks pretty okay right here. So we'll get low, and then try to avoid running into a fence. Let's see if we can just ease her down. Ground, ground game's not uh, fantastic in this. You don't really get a lot of, you get a little bouncing, but not too bad. Get that tail skid in the dirt. Make sure we're not running into anything. And then we're down safe. Mixture's down so the engine's cut off, shouldn't be any fires. Take a look at, look at that beautiful, Sopwith planes always have beautiful furniture. Look at this, this is a cockpit, you could have your mom over to eat in this cockpit fine. I think the French kind of had the same thing with a spad. The Germans, I don't think they had a, uh, ever had a cockpit quite like that. They were more about function. Uh, let's take a quick look at the external plane. Alright, so she's, uh, chewed up a little bit. That's going to take a little bit of canvas and a little bit of dope to patch those up. Especially, whoops. There, especially right can I get in closer there yeah right there on that upper left wing oh look there's the oh no I thought that was the maybe that's the hole in the engine I can't quite decide if the engine cowling shows holes down there by the cowling lip there but at any rate I'm gonna let the mission progress um, if you let your guys fly it gives them a better chance to get back so I'm just gonna sit here and let this run and once they've had a chance to finish up whatever they're doing to get back, we'll head to the debrief and I'll meet you there.
So I have uh, no idea what our final disposition was there or how everything turned out. Um, we're going to take a look and total flying time, 33 minutes. Force land your machine within friendly lines. Aircraft is moderately damaged. Take a day to repair. No enemy aircraft were shot down, so that's not good. But let's see if any of ours got shot down. Lightly wounded, shook up. Okay, forced to land. Yeah, so it looks like we had a bunch of people. That's me, forced to land. Craft destroyed by enemy. Oh, <laughs> so Roderick Dallas, his craft was destroyed by the enemy, but he's okay. He's lightly wounded. That's because he's a historical ace and will not uh, die until he died in real life was the choice that they made. Let's see. So I'd say that I actually had probably the best hit percentage of anybody on our flight. That was So that was pretty brutal. You could see that, I don't know, you'll see in the video, I had, you know, pretty much whichever way I turned, somebody was shooting at me. And it's always interesting to see how the AI does things. Sometimes you'll do that where you'll, uh, you know, it seems like everybody's ganging up on you and you'll feel like they're picking on you. Other times they pick on one of your squad mates and you can just waltz in there and uh, attack away. So we made it out, we got our machine being repaired. Nobody, we didn't lose anybody from the squadron that time. Gonna, let's advance a couple days right now. So I forget next time. And there we go. Next time when we pick up, it will be the 29th of July, 1917, with uh, Philip Flighty, our three mission, two confirmed kill pilot flying with uh, Royal Naval Air Service Squadron number, what are we in one, right? Number one, flying in Flanders, which is appropriate because we're over Flanders Fields. 20% overall. This is depressing right if you keep those statistics um, so so far we've shot down one twin seater we shot down one albatross and then we claimed another albatross but nobody was around to see it so it will forever be just between us all right thanks for joining hope you uh, were entertained with this edition of let's play wings over flanders fields and we'll catch you next time until then take care it's rick rawlings